All right, welcome everyone to another episode of the Introspection Hour with Brian and Patrick. Now, today we're going to break down something that happened to Brian a couple years ago, his quarter life crisis. And the thing is, it might sound a little funny, but it's pretty serious about what's going on because you end up with this anxiety and over the direction and the quality of your life. So if you're wondering about why your quality of life is not as good as you think you are, it could be that you actually are going through a quarter life crisis like Brian did. So today we're going to break it down, see what those individual components are, what he did to actually recognize it. And then when you take a step back after you've looked at all the different aspects of what a quarter life crisis can bring, what does it actually mean and how do you get through it? So Brian, explain a little bit about what triggered and explain your quarter life crisis to us. I remember this day being so particular for me. It was a very profound moment that happened in my life. It was the third week of October back in 2017. A typical day, nothing really particular happened. And I came home, made my usual, did my usual routine, made dinner for me and my ex-girlfriend. We settled down, watched an episode of like House or something, or basically, or Game of Thrones, it doesn't matter. As I was getting ready for the evening night to end, I remember being a little high. And I, and I remember just watching an episode of Stark Out. That's just something that I kind of did every evening. Just, And I remember as I was getting ready for bed, I don't know if it was the marijuana or not, but I remember particularly laying down and all of a sudden, Pat, this, this was the scariest thing that, that has ever happened to me. You've ever heard the word or the phrase feeling the weight of the world on your shoulders? I, that's the only way I can describe the feeling that I experienced is this all of a sudden, I felt very heavy. Granted, I was already laying down on my side, but I felt the weight of the world just on my shoulders and I, I couldn't move. I was seriously paralyzed from just something that I was experiencing, but I clearly remembered curling up into a ball and just holding my knees towards my chest. And all of a sudden, I just started to cry. Not just like a little teary, but I just started full blown man cry. And my ex-girlfriend was sitting or sleeping next to me. And she's like, hey, are you okay? I mean, considering the fact that nothing had happened to us, we didn't get into a fight. Nothing particular happened in politics or anything that could relate to me crying. But I knew that something was wrong. I just felt a sense of like, like, is this it? Is this what life has to offer me? And so the next day, I just tried to play it off as like, maybe it was just an anomaly of maybe perhaps because I was high on marijuana, but it was something that stuck with me that gave me this weird sense of like, something is not right with me. And that's where I could say, started that transgression of this quarter life crisis that we're about to speak of today. Yeah, and I appreciate you sharing that, Brian, because you know, that, that moment that you felt and breaking down, there is an element of our own introspection journey where we actually sometimes get to the point where our, we can't handle ourselves and you have to cry to let it out. So I think that's just kind of the body's, your mind and body and soul's natural reaction to having the weight of the world on your shoulders, or at least that's what you felt like. I think what gets interesting is the next couple of days and, and months and even years, you took that time to actually figure out and break down why you experienced that. You were able to identify it as a quarter life crisis. I think there's a couple of things that people actually can even more relate to, which is you mentioned it before a little bit of this repetitive lifestyle, right? And so expand a little bit more, Brian, on what are the commonalities that, at least from what you read about what a quarter life crisis is that apply to you? So is it like repetitive lifestyle, career burnout? What were they for you? So Patrick, everything, okay? I was experiencing career burnout in the field of physical therapy where I have tried every single scenario and different settings for P that a PT can do, and I was still not satisfied. Add to the fact that every day felt like the same damn thing. You wake up Monday, you get ready for the work week, it's Friday hits, you have fun with your friends on the weekend, Sunday comes, you get ready for the work week again, Monday you go to work, and that's what life felt like for me. It was just very, very repetitive, man. <laughs> What else? I mean, did you have any issues with some of that lack of hope or maybe the quality of your life or the direction in where your life was going? As I was experiencing the next few days after I experienced that quarter life crisis, I was trying to break it down. Like what else is missing in my life? 
A big part of it was the career burnout and the, the repetitiveness of life. But I realized the one thing that really, really got to me was that I felt like I had nothing left to look forward to. And that was a big thing for me, Pat. When you have nothing left to look forward to, it makes you feel like, then what do I have left to live for? Feeling trapped, you know, almost the reason why you kind of, you know, curled up and you're just stuck. You're stuck in your life trying to understand, you know, what else is there? What else is there in life? It wasn't clear. So that makes a lot of sense. I go through that every now and then. Let me ask you something in terms of one of the previous topics we talked about, which is insecurities. And I know just even from our own podcast and talking to you, that has been a big factor for a lot of what you have gone through. How did that play? How did your insecurities play into your quarter life crisis? So regarding insecurity, one of the biggest things for me was the fact that as a physical therapist, I felt like anyone could do my job. And that is not something that I feel anybody in their, in their practicing career field should experience. Because I was basically doing the same thing with all of my patients. I mean, granted, we're getting them better, but I was just, it was the same repetitive thing. And I felt like my job felt meaningless to me. And that was a big, big insecurity with what I was experiencing. Just, it felt meaningless to me. <laughs> Yeah, and that's such a key point of the insecurities around one's career, feeling like someone else can do your job and whether or not you bring value, let alone are making an impact. Those all bring us down, especially for uh, our generation, you know, the people in our 20s and 30s that are going through a quarter life crisis. This is pretty real because we feel like we can be replaced. You feel like you could be replaced at any time. And that's a horrible emotion to experience in general. But the biggest thing out of all this, Brian, that I wanted to ask you is the weight of the world is on you. Your insecurities are creeping up. Things are not going as well. How did you even have the wherewithal or the awareness to actually realize it was a quarter life crisis? What was that point that you were actually able to put some words or a definition uh, or a quote unquote label? Google, man, come on. It's funny, so when I was searching for that, I didn't really know that that was what I was going through at the time. I just felt like this has got to be some type of anxiety or some, some just depression that I was experiencing. So I literally typed it like, you know, midlife crisis in your 30s, like question mark. And I think I did end up seeing somewhere like, oh, this is probably a quarter life crisis that you're probably experiencing. Are you suffering from a quarter life crisis? Now I'm just start clicking on links and you kind of, I, you, it kind of helps you identify like, oh, I think I'm experiencing that, 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 and that, all right. Probably going through a quarter life crisis. I think what really is important is whatever way you identify it, at least you identified it. So then you can start to understand and break down what issues you were dealing with. So let's dig into that a little bit more. You mentioned a couple of times the repetitive lifestyle. What's interesting is I've always approached it as something that's just necessary and you have to accept it. And I didn't take your perspective of like, why are we doing this or it's so boring it kind of made to me like, hmm, this is how my day is usually split up. I'm in a position where I need my job, so I just got to dedicate to it. So I accept every part of my day, every part of my week. It is something, it's pretty boring, but it wasn't, it didn't affect me as much. Now for you though, it was something that kind of drove you crazy, right? It, it drove you basically bonkers, just even trying to have something new happen said you feel alive. When you were breaking down the idea of this repetitive lifestyle as something that was causing your quarter life crisis, Brian, what other aspects stood out to you about it? Oh, th the biggest thing is this, and this, uh, this is how I explain it to everybody, okay? You get a job so you can make money, right? You make money so that you could live, obviously have, have, have a house, apartment, so on and so forth, but what else? You go to work, you make money so you can buy stuff. Why, right? You, so you buy stuff and fulfill some level of happiness. I have, a I have a nicer TV, I have a nicer car. Okay, so what, All right? Uh, I make money so I could go on trips. Granted, I've been to, let's say 60 plus different countries. I got to essentially experience a lot of things that most people will never get a chance to experience. And I'm not taking any of those experiences for granted, but in my mind, it kept saying, so what, <laughs> right? You make money so you could buy stuff. You make money so you could go on these trips. And yet I was still not satisfied. And that was the biggest 
like aha moment that I was experiencing was like, holy crap, this is life. Like this is what most people assume life is. You buy stuff, you take care of a family, you go on trips. Am I in, I'm in trouble because I just felt like this is what life is supposed to be. And I, I felt like I, lack of a better word, Pat, I felt like I've done everything. <laughs> Which is interesting because in comes this concept of there's nothing to look forward to anymore. Right. When you've seen Europe and Asia and Brian's rode on an elephant and done all sorts of things that I'm pretty envious, yeah, I'm envious of, there's nothing to look forward to. But it does make you question whether or not the things you're looking forward to are for you or just for experiences or just something that is materialistic. Right? And all the things that you listed, it seemed a bit materialistic of all the things that you were just trying to experience, you know, have something happen so that the, the repetitive lifestyle and just going on with your day to day, there's something new to talk about. There's something new going on. But one thing that becomes a little bit clear when you describe your quarter life crisis, Brian, is this lack of direction, right? So even if you got to that point. Explain to everyone where you where your headspace was at when you were starting to realize you didn't know where to go with your life. Yeah, you're right, Pat. I didn't have a sense of direction. And that's the and looking back at it now, that was one of the biggest components of why I was experiencing that that dilemma. Is that I just felt like my life was on a, a circular path. I was on I was a wheel on a cog, or sorry, I was an animal. How do you say the what's the phrase? I was an animal in a cog just doing the same thing so I could get food and just so I could go back on the wheel and just produce, right? I was just a producing machine. And I didn't have a sense of direction. And I, that, that was the biggest issue that I was facing at the time was just like my PT career was going nowhere. My extracurricular activities were going nowhere. Granted, I wasn't learning anything. I wasn't doing anything new. Going back to what you're saying, I was just, I wasn't absorbing anything anymore. And that was the biggest, biggest issue that I was dealing with. That point that you just made about the lack of direction of your life, that hits me so much because it reminds me of this point in my life where I had gotten to my achievements through these five-year goals. And I got to a point where I couldn't define my next five-year goals. And it was just weighing on me. It's kind of this feeling of after you hit your goals, what do you do? Just like you said, after you do, you feel like you've done everything you wanted to, what do you do with your life? And I didn't have an answer, but your story actually starts your journey, your introspection journey on a whole nother level just starts kind of at this point for you. Help us understand what you actually did to actually pull yourself up, put, you on, put yourself on this upward trajectory. It was a hard battle, Pat. It was a hard transition that I had to go through and I, so it's something that I still go through to this day. Granted, it's not as significant as it was like even a year ago. Again, I'm going to use Google. Okay. You type in how to find yourself again. You're going to find all these plethora of just different links and different tests that you can take to essentially identify yourself, right? Like labeling, like, why is it that I'm experiencing this? Is there something wrong with me? And I remember just going and taking different tests, like the Ikigai test, for example. I remember going through this Myers-Briggs test, which is just something that's very popular for people who like to identify with a specific thing. Like, are you an intro introvert, extrovert? Are you an intuitive person, et cetera, et cetera. So I remember going through all of those different tests because I was so desperate to figure out something that could help identify like a direction in life. like. Maybe because I have this specific personality, then maybe I should start going through towards this direction. And that's where it, it kind of led me, just desperation of just trying to really figure out who it is that I should be as a person. So Patrick, uh, Disney came out with a movie, it's called Soul. It was a really, really lovely movie that came out, I think Christmas Day in 2020. That movie really, really touched me for one particular reason. And I remember this one specific scene is where the main character, spoiler alert, Joe Gardner and, and the Soul 22, they're in this valley and they come upon this big creature, which they identify as a lost soul. And upon further breakdown of this particular scene, you see it equate to like an accountant who's just doing the same routine work every single day. And after they're able to free up this lost soul and he becomes a free spirit, he's one of those characters in the movie where he's like, you know what, screw this, I'm done. And he just goes on and lives life. 
And this is one idea that we're all trying to answer is what is my passion and what is my purpose in life? In this movie, it does bring that up really, really well. And I realized instead of trying to find my passion, instead of trying to find my purpose, because that's what I've been doing for the last two years, I should try and find my spark. As cheesy as that sound, I need to find that spark that makes me want to live life again. That makes so much sense because how many times have people said, what is your passion? As if people understand that and people try to apply passion to everything as this like magic solution is silver bullet or find your purpose in life. What are you living for? You know, you're, are you going to make a change in the world? And yet that still doesn't satisfy people. It does not help you give yourself a sense of why you're living, which is what the quarter life crisis is all about. Trying to define and have that spark in, in all of us that makes us want to live, no matter what it is. Some people it's passion, some people it's purpose of life, some people it's happiness and balance like you get when you understand the Ikigai model and test. It's different for each person, but you do bring up a good point about what the movie said, which is you need to find your own spark, right? And I remember watching the movie, every soul has a spark and that's when they can come live on earth. Right. Until they find that spark, they don't have it. So everyone has it inside of them. If you believe Disney and movies and everything, all these tests and all these assessments, what is some word of advice for someone actually going through it, trying to understand themselves during this period, Brian? Because you've done a multitude of these tests. What are the pros and cons of just understanding it from an individual basis? You know, like going through all these different tests, I was trying so desperately to just identify and put myself in a category of where I should be, where I should, where I should be in my life. And after taking at least five or 10 different tests to you know, help find myself and to help identify myself, I realized that although they do help to some degree, it didn't solve my answer. And that the one thing that I would like to advise people for those who are you know, really desperate to really find a solution to this question of who am I, who am I supposed to be in life, is you actually sit down and spend the 10 to 15 minutes of just really on paper, what is it that I want in life? What do I want out of this specific life? And the other important question is what makes me happy, <laughs> right? Like for me, I, I actually really enjoy being outdoors in nature and you know, going hiking and going on these just trips. And that's just something that brings spark to my life. And I realized that's where I should probably start focusing my attention on is just doing that. Spoiler alert, people, we might say 10, 15 minutes, but it's really after weeks or months of deep thought, finding yourself and even having the courage to write something down. It's one thing to take the assessment and have it spit out results to you. It's another to put what's in your head, own it and write it down for you to actually remember what you wrote, which is something that these tests and assessments won't be able to do for you. They don't internalize it enough for you. They're helpful to put some words around it, but you have to choose what makes you happy in life. You have to choose and find your spark. So just kind of understand that folks is, we're not saying they're bad. We're not saying they're wrong. They do help, but take it with a grain of salt. And at some point you have to own up and define it yourself. And so this introspection journey folks is something that takes a long time and give yourself time. You got to take it from Brian, who's actually gone through this, is going through it. So Brian, why don't you leave everyone with, with your words of wisdom for anyone that is going through a quarter life crisis? Looking back at, in 2017, just that the whole time I experienced that quarter life crisis, the one thing I, that at least it did help identify is that as weird as it sounds, it kind of gave me meaning in life. It helped me redefine, again, going back to direction. It gave me a sense of direction of where I should be going because obviously, mentally, there was something wrong with me that my mind was telling me that it was maybe perhaps too afraid to just expose itself. But I knew that something was wrong. And I'm glad that I experienced it because it allowed me to reshape and redefine the person that I want to be. So that was one of the biggest questions that I got out of it is what do I want out of life? Where do I want to see myself and where is it that I should essentially be going? This was not an easy process, Pat. There's, this is the moment where I felt like sometimes I feel like I did not wake up to this feeling because I guarantee when I was in my 20s, I never thought this was how, where my life would end up, right? I'm pretty sure I guarantee it. I thought that this is what life was supposed to be. You get a job, you, have, you raise a family, you, you get married. 
And yet that wasn't enough for me. It was just a continuous journey where, what are we, 2021 now? It's been three and a half years, well, three and a half, four years of me experiencing this. And the hardest thing is that I wanted to find a solution now. I wanted an answer. God, you know, whoever, tell me my direction in life. Where should I be going? And the one advice that I want to say is that you have to be able to just try everything and you have to expose yourself to new experiences because I remember that's the one thing that I was lacking was experiencing new things because that's where what brings life joy and brings life meaning is this constant evolution of us, right? If you're not learning, if you're not growing, then what are you doing, right? You're just stagnating, you're plateauing in your life. And I realized that that's the one thing that keeps me going is learning new skills. You know, we just have to keep redefining ourselves, Pat. And so we just want to appreciate everyone who continues to support us on our introspection hour with Brian and Patrick and tune in next time and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks guys. Bye.